Hey everybody, this is Clay at Salem Baptist Church, and this is April 6, 2020, and I thought that we could do something a little different uh, this week, and we could go through the Easter week together. I don't know about you, but um, I certainly sometimes have been confused about what happens going up to this week, and when it happened, and where it happened, and who it happened to, and uh, especially when you read the Gospels together, about a third of the Gospels are given over to this last week of Jesus' life um, leading up to the crucifixion and the resurrection. And so what I thought we could do is starting with the day, following on from Pastor Bill's message yesterday on the triumphal entry, is just look at what happened on Monday of that week of Jesus in and around Jerusalem. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to share my screen with you and you can follow along with me. Uh, with the passages and the maps and pictures and things that we'll look at. Jesus on the way to the cross, a day-by-day -day look at the Passion Week, where we can look at all these things together. This picture here is Jesus on the Mount of Olives, overlooking Jerusalem. You can see Jerusalem here in the background, and this is the artist's rendition of him weeping over Jerusalem, which is one of today's passages. So this first slide here, this is an overview graph of Jesus and his correspondence with other people throughout the week. Uh, this looks a little confusing, I'll admit, at, at first glance, but uh, when you look at it, it can be quite helpful. So we're going to look at Monday today. Yesterday, of course, was the triumphal entry, and Monday is mostly focused around the temple and Jesus cleansing the temple. So Jesus here is represented by this red line, and whoever the line is in close proximity to is corresponds with the, the groups of people that are together. So Jesus is with the orange line, the disciples in the morning, and then towards the afternoon, Jesus comes together with the pink line and also the blue line, which is the pink line as the crowds, the public, and then the Jewish leaders are the blue line here. And he comes, he meets them in the act of cleansing of the temple in the temple area. Um, so today we're going to see four things. We're only going to spend time on three of them. First thing that Jesus does is he curses the fig tree. We'll talk more about that tomorrow and its significance. The second thing he does is he cried over Jerusalem on his way into the city that day. Thirdly, he cleanses the temple and he taught uh, in the temple. And then finally, he healed the lame and the blind in the temple. Taking time, even in the midst of all the things that are going on, to to minister and to serve these people. So this is a little map just to help us get a, the lay of the land. Jesus does not spend one night in Jerusalem, not until that Thursday night when he was arrested and he, he's taken in, but he spends all of his nights in the evenings here in Bethany. This is the home of Mary and Martha, and so he goes from Bethany each day, maybe along this way that we don't know, uh, into Jerusalem. And the first day, somewhere along the way, it says the scripture says he's hungry and he sees a fig tree and he curses the fig tree because it's not bearing any sign of fruit. And then somewhere, uh, maybe along here on the Mount of Olives, he's overlooking Jerusalem. He can see down into the city and he weeps over Jerusalem. And then he continues his way into the, into the city and then into the temple area. This is another map of uh, what the what Jerusalem would have looked like in Jesus' day. This is north over here, so Bethany would be back over this way, and Jesus would have made, made his way across the Mount of Olives, this bit here, and then into Jerusalem, maybe by this gate, I think it's called the Lion Gate, and then around and into the Temple Precinct. Now this arch is a famous arch. You can still see bits of it today. Uh, this is the artist's rendition of what it would look like, and Jesus would have entered into the temple precinct or the temple complex, because it was a complex. It was very large. So you can see here, it wasn't just a temple. The temple was a smaller thing in the middle, a smaller building, but it's surrounded by uh, this courtyard and the portico here. And so when Jesus is cleansing the temple, it's probably happening in the Gentiles' courtyard here. So the first thing we'll look at today is Luke 19, um, this passage which says, And when he drew near and saw the city, this is Jerusalem, he wept over it, saying, Would that you, even you, had known on this day the things that make for peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. 
For the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up a barricade, very descriptive language, set up barricades to block people from going out around you and surround you and hem you in on every side and tear you down to the ground and you and your children within you. And they will not leave one stone upon another because you did not know the time of your visitation. You did not know Jerusalem when the Messiah, the long-awaited one, the Savior, had visited you. So what is this talking about? Jesus is foretelling the destruction of Jerusalem, which happens in A.D. 70, about 40 years after Jesus, under the emperor Titus. And it was exactly as he said, they did not leave one stone on the other, they destroyed the city. And so Jesus, knowing this is going to happen, coming down from the Mount of Olives on this Monday, overlooking the city, knowing that he's going to die for these people later that week, and they're rejecting him, he weeps for them. Second thing that he does here, or the third thing, first he curses the fig tree, then he weeps over Jerusalem, now he cleanses the temple. This is from the Gospel of Mark, uh, chapter 11, verses 15 through 19. They came to Jerusalem, and he entered the temple, and he began to drive out those who sold and those who bought in the temple. Because this was the Passover season, people would come from a long ways, from all across the Mediterranean, to worship at the temple. And Jerusalem would have been busting at the seams with people. It would have been a hive of activity. People were excited to be there. But because of their long journeys, they couldn't bring their animals with them. So there were people there who took advantage of that and would sell them animals in the temple so they could participate in the sacrificial worship. And they would do so at uh, much higher rates than normal, being able to make a decent profit from it. And also, and he overturned the tables of the money changers because they would not accept Roman currency. They had to be changed over into the national currency. The money chambers, again, took advantage of people there, turned over their tables and the seats of those who sold the pigeons for the sacrifices. And he would not allow anyone to carry anything through the temple. So this here is Jesus purifying the worship. We need to come with reverence when we come to worship, is what he's saying. And he was teaching them and saying to them, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations? But you have made it a den of robbers, that robbers make their, make out, make their hideout here. And the chief priests and the scribes heard it and were seeking a way to destroy him. This is the building drama of this week. They don't like Jesus. Why don't they like him? They feared him because the crowd listened. The crowd was astonished at Jesus' teaching. And then the last thing we see here on this Monday was that Jesus takes time to minister to the blind and the lame. Verse 14 of Matthew 21, And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple. This is after he cleansed it. He healed them. Despite all the pressures that's going on, the anticipation of his death that he knows, that, that he is... Uh, scheduling everything to happen so that he dies on Friday, the day of Passover. Despite all of that, Jesus takes time to serve and to care for those who are less fortunate. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying out in the temple, Hosanna to the Son of David, this is the Hail the Conquering Hero song, that they were excited to see that Jesus was here and that he might lead a revolution. He was a powerful leader, and he could take them... Uh, out from the shackles of Rome and and lead Israel to, to glory again is what these people were anticipating. So they said, Hosanna to the son of David, the king. But the scribes were indignant. And they said to him, Do you hear what these are saying? And Jesus said to them, Yes. Have you never read? This is a rebuke here. He is saying that you should read and know this. Out of the mouths of infant and nursing babies, you have prepared praise. This is a claim of deity, that Jesus is accepting this, accepting their, their worship, because this in Psalm 8-2 is speaking about God. So Jesus is saying that, yes, you should know this, because God has prepared praise for himself out of the mouths 
of infants and nursing babies. And leaving them, he went out of the city to Bethany, back again, that place we saw, and he lodged there. So three quick things to think about in meditating about Jesus' activities on this day. Number one, Jesus hated hypocrisy. Jesus hated hypocrisy that he saw it through the commercializing of worship. These people were not concerned about God. They were just concerned about their pockets. The abuse of the worshipers, taking advantage of the less able and the less aware, and the missing of spiritual fruit. Jesus went to the temple expecting to see fruit, fervent worship of God there. However, it had all the activity, but none of the substance. All the signs of religious activity, but there was actually nothing there that was profitable, that was true spiritual worship. It was empty. And in fact, it was worse than that. It was corrupt, and it was self-serving instead of worshiping God. Jesus showed his authority and his claim of deity. Jesus, through the cursing of the fig tree and through the cleansing of the temple, his, his, he showed his authority and that he accepted the worship of these children. Again, shows his claim of deity. And then finally, Jesus again showed his care for people. Despite everything that was going on, Jesus took time to care for these people. What a lesson that should be to us in the midst of the crisis that we're in, that Jesus always had time to help and to serve. And uh, I think that's it for today. Oh, that's it for today. So I hope that was an encouragement to you and maybe provided a little bit of light of what happened to Jesus on Monday. So come back tomorrow, Tuesday, and we will look at what our Savior does on that day as he continues to head towards the cross, his his death, and then his glorious resurrection on Sunday. So come back tomorrow. Okay, have a good one.